2015, day 17. No such thing as too much. This is a nice short problem. The elves bought too much eggnog again. To fit it all into your refrigerator, you'll need to move it into small containers. You take an inventory of the capacities. Ah, we're doing combinations. So we did permutations last time, and now we need to do combinations. Okay, I can see this taking an hour, because we can either use uh, an existing crate to get us the combinations, or we could write our own combination code. It's going to be um, a, a, a bit of a slog to try to get through all this, but let's see if we can do it. Um, let's get status. Okay. Source lib, and we'll create a, this is permute. We'll create a combination. Let's call it combo. And we'll, we'll just use our permute as a framework. Source combo. Yeah, we have an error now because we don't, it doesn't exist. Yep, that's fine. We're creating it. So we want to create a trait. We want to create an iterator and then we want to write inside. Um, actually, you know what we should do is probably just develop Let's just write that so to, to clean up the error. Let's, in our solution, we'll write something that generates combinations, and then we'll, we'll port that into the library. That way we have the solution done um, first. And we can work, work out the kinks there and then make it a general purpose thing. So this is day 17. And again, this would be very, very straightforward if I just used the library function for it. Because, um, sorry, a, a crate for it. Like, I bet you the lib rs, if you say iter tools. But half the fun is writing your own, right? I didn't write a JSON parser and I didn't write an MD5 calculator. But I bet you in here there's um, combinations. Yeah. So this just returns combinations of a vector. This is exactly what we want, but let's see if we can write our own. Um, day 17 and then day 17. Oops. All right. So let's just say fn combinations, and we can just we can just write something that'll print it out. So um, I guess part one we'll just call it combinations, and we'll create a vec to pass in one two three. Let's make it a little bit bigger, four, and then this will just take in a vec here. Um, uh, I32. We do it this way because that then Clippy won't complain. All right, so now this should build. It won't do anything. Oh, expected this. Oh, I need to uh, ampersand it. Come on, get on the home row. I can just do that, right? Yeah. Okay, so we can just start off by printing out um, each element. So the so how do combinations work, right? Let's let's actually do those. So we have first we have combinations of one. So assuming we're starting with one, two, three. There. First we have combinations of one. Then we have combinations of two, which is going to be one, two, one, three. One four, two three, two four, and finally three four. All right, so those are all combinations you can do with two. Then you can do combinations of three. One two three, one two four, 
one and then we so once we hit the last one here we increment the next one back one three four and now this is as far as this can go so now it's two three four and that's it and then for combinations of four there's only one of those all right so now we just need to write something that'll generate all that we know we have to go for each one of these things so each one is going to have a combination. First, we're going to do all the combinations of ones, then all the combination of twos, and all the combination of threes, and all combinations of fours. So we just need a loop to do that for combo in one dot dot vec dot len. One dot dot equals vec dot len. This will give us our, okay, now we're going to generate all the entries with just one, or just two, or just three, or just four. And now we want to create an index into this because I think what we do is just say, okay, we'll start for the case of three. We'll start with entry one, two, and three. And these could be anything, right? Um, and I'm just doing my index. If I, if I create an index into it, I think that'll, that'll make things easier. If I say, let me, um, I don't know, IDX equals back with capacity combo. Right? Because we're doing an entry, for, start off with one and then go to two, three, and four. So then for I in zero dot dot combo. Now, now we're going to generate the indexes. IDX equal uh, dot push I. Okay, so this will this will print out we can we can actually dump these out now idx right and we should see one and then one zero one zero one two zero one two three right and so that's the entries to each one of these things so the first one we're going to do is just just do this one and that's going to increment all the way to four and print out each time and then we're going to do the same thing here but now once this carries we're going to have to increment the previous one four increment index we're going to start from the back All right this is the this is the index we're going to increment so this idx of increment index plus equals one if we've reached the final index for this entry in the array right this this one goes three and stops there. Three, then four, right? This So this is two, two is the three. I, I probably should have named these, put these A, B, C, D, just to make it more obvious. Let me do that real quick here, right? We're gonna be doing um, A first for um, combo of one and then B, then C, then D. Um, let's do this, four, which is a D. Right, so this is index zero, which means it's gonna print out A, then it's gonna go one, two, three, which is B, C, and D. Then we're gonna do this. So zero and one are gonna be A and B. We increment one, we get A and C. So now we have zero, two, right? And then zero, three is A and D. And now that we're at three, we can increment this and then reset this, but we don't want to reset this to one because we incremented this to one, this becomes two. Um, so if our index of our increment If we've reached the length of our vector, right? Um, oh, we need another loop here. We're going to continue. Because we want to go back to the previous one and then have it reset all these values. Right. Um, 
if we haven't, so if we just incremented and we haven't hit our length, our, our end, then for next in inc index plus one through to the number of combos we're doing, idx of next is equal to idx of next minus one incremented. Right? So this is the case where we've hit, we've gone 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Now it's equal to 3. So now we come down here, we increment the previous one. And then we want to work our way through the remaining ones and set those. If, except If we've hit our limit, then we want to go back up here and try again. This is all very complicated, isn't it? And I don't know if I'm explaining it very well. Um, and then if we hit this thing, then we want to break out of um, this loop. Right, this is the four ink index. And then we have this other loop here, then we gotta say, oh, if we reach this point, because we could get to this point because we ran out of numbers, or we re reach this point because we broke here. So let's actually have a little um, let not done equals true. And then just said done to false here. So if we're not done, then um, let's just print out what IDX looks like and keep going. And of course that doesn't work. Uh, 47. And again, this is not built, this is not failing here. I don't know why that, that suddenly stopped working for me. Oh, it's not ink, it's IDX. Uh, line 47, there, I, D, X, there, okay, so what, oh, that's a test, let's do a run, uh, okay, so that failed, how do I kill it, I guess I can kill it that way, all right, um, we need to stop when we hit the, when we hit the limit, all right, what's happening, cargo run, if I say cargo run, we can see it's just going zero, one, two, three, and then it skipped four. Oh, we're not getting to the next combo here. So it did almost the right thing, but now we need to actually get. Oh, I'm I'm doing it twice here. Um, initial, and then uh, computed. We can take a look at the difference there. So initial zero. Oh, so it's it's staying in the loop. It's never exiting the loop. We need to figure figure out. Oh, because I have an infinite loop here. We need to break if we're done. Else break. That's what it did wrong. There. Okay. So we have initial zero. We have computed one two three. We have initial zero one zero two zero three one two one three two three. And then zero one two zero one three. Zero two three one two three, yeah. Does that? I think I think that does the trick, right? Looks like we're getting all the combinations. And actually, I can clean this up a little bit. I can just say, no, this is fine. I guess the question is, how do we make this? 
how do we make it uh, a generic thing that can because right now I, I generate all the all the values here and without regard to being able to yield one at a time and that would be the key here is be able to yield one at a time um, which means we have to save our current state but let's let's see if we can use this code here to I even forgot what the, what the problem was. We're, oh, that's right, Ignite Capacities. So we have a 20, 15, 10, 5, and 5. So we need to create a, um, a little function, um, some Ignog. And we'll give it um, i32, and then the list of indices, which is u sizes. Because we're not actually using vec here except for its length. So now for each one, we want to count up the, the value. Oh, this needs to sum it up. So this is pretty straightforward. This is idx iter. And then we just add up um, a and b, which is a plus vec b and this yields an i32 right and then all we need to do is sum those up we can say print lin idx sums up to this value sum a nog of our vec and our idx and that should just show us for the initial ones what they are. Oh, slices are type U size. What? Okay, uh, do I have to ampersand this guy for that one? Yep, okay, so now what's this one? Oh, 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 I have to deref it. Okay, that was confusing. All right, so one, three, six, and ten. Oh, right, right, right. We have to give it the actual capacities now. Um, for our test case, what does the puzzle input look like? It's a lot bigger, so that'll take a lot longer. That's fine. Let's just save these, put these here, get rid of the and, and let's see if we can actually do this. And what are we trying to um, add up to 25 liters? Do we see? Do we see any that are 25s? Not yet, but we can. Let's do these guys as well. So this becomes this, goes to this, goes to this, and then some eggnog, the vector, and the idx. So there's there's a bunch of 25s in here, right? So 15 and 10. Well. I'm not printing out the actual values, am I? I'm printing out the index to the values. So 0 and 3, which is 20 and 5. 0 and 4, which is 20 and 5, right? And then 1 and 2, which is 15 and 10. That's that one. And then they're saying 15, 5, and 5, which is 1, 3, and 4. Yep, there it is. OK, so that's, that's doing the thing. That we wanted to do. Uh, let's see if we can do it with the actual input, um, which is just a vector of, num of capacities. So in pars, oh, we have to get the input. Uh, get input 2015 17 input 2015 day 17 dot text. Looks good to me. And parsing that is pretty straightforward, right? For L, actually we can say AOC lib read lines input 2015 17.txt split on this um, parse as an i32 unwrap collect will collect, figure it out based on the fact that self cap is a VEC of I32s. Let's find out. Um, cap 
back new. Really? I thought you could split on a... That's why. So each line is this now. And it can't parse it. Method not found. Right. I want to map. Can I map like this? Will it do that? Or do I have to do it? Yeah. Um, X dot parse. Unwrap. It still doesn't like that. Iter. Okay. <laughs> it figured it out. And we know that self-cap is a VEC of I32, comma global, whatever that means. So now here in part one, instead of passing this, we just pass in self-cap. Oh, and we're looking, we're looking for actual amounts, right? We want to look for how much can fit 150 liters. It's still computing. It looks like there's a lot of entries for however many of these are. So let's kill that. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're looking for 150. And there's a few. And we're looking for how many can fill 150. All right, so that's all we need to do is print those out. Or sum those up, rather. Um, let count. I don't have count already, do I? No. Equal zero. And then every time it's 150, I'm not going to print it out. I'm just going to say if this is equal to 150, we're going to increment count. And then we're going to return that count. Um, and then the same thing here. Um, if this is equal to 150, count plus equals 1. And it looks like I put an extra paren there. Okay. So it took almost a second and it didn't print out the answer. Let's fix that. Thirteen oh four. Let's see if that's right. It is okay. That's good. So, the thing before I go to part two, right? Let's let's convert this over to an actual usable library routine. How do we do that? Because now we need to store. Oh, I don't have combo in here. Um, oh, let's yeah. Get add this, this, and this. Get commit dash m 2015 day 17 part one. There's some code style issues. Okay, and now we have a combo. So let's put that here. And how are we going to write this? Um, I guess the first thing we'll do is we'll create the, we'll do the easy stuff first, right? So let's create the trait. Implement it. I'm assuming we need a clone thing again, because why not? Combinations of self to combination iterator t. Comb 
definition iterator mu of self. Okay, so that's that. So now we're going to create a combination iterator, which is going to take what? We're going to need um, to be able to store all the existing state. And then we just need to implement a next for it. Right. Um, Hmm. I'm just trying to think of what oops, what needs to go in this struct that we need to save. So we need to save our current combo, how many we're on. We need to, to save the current state of the index. We need to save the vector that we're messing around with, just like here. Uh, let's call it back vec t. We need to store the combo. That's going to be u size. We need to store the index, the idx, vec u size. Is that it? Oh, and then we have this case here where we generate it outside of the loop the first time. So we need to figure that out too. Um, well, let's 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 work on it. Um, we do need to impl t clone, right? To generate it, we need a new function. Combination iterator t. Um, that's just going to say. I'm going to take the vec. This is vec t, but can you just do this? Is this allowed? And then we're going to just return self, and this generate a self, and this will contain a vec, um, which is going to just be the vec. Um, can I say vec from vec? And then current state, uh, sorry, combo is next. Uh, that'll start at one, right? Because we start our combo at one here. And then we have our idx, which is just going to be a vec new. And then we'll set it when we come in here. So now what we need to do is say impl t clone iterator. All right, I'm just copying what we have down here for combination iterator t. Our output type is a vec of t. And then we just need to run next in itself, which returns an option on self as iterator item, which is a very confusing syntax, but it does the trick. OK, so if I do that, does this build? It does not. Oh, because I didn't do this. I got to say none. Um, oh, I have too many of those. And not enough of those. OK, yeah, this I'm not worried about. Let me comment this out. But that should do the trick. So now here we have four warnings because we're not using any of those things. All right, so now we just need to write the next function. So that means that can go away. So in next, um, we do have this loop. And we need to check this case here where we need to initialize our index. So actually, what we can do is create a bool and make it true, and then we'll set it to false. So we'll start off with the loop, but we can just change true to false later. So we can say if self first, self state is back new. I'm just doing this here. We, we don't have to do the width capacity and then just say for uh, idx in zero self combo. Oh, why don't I do state? This is idx. Because um, I'm thinking it's the current state of the self combo of the um, results. So let me say self idx push idx. 
I don't know if that's con too confusing. We, we then clear first, and then we return the current state of our combinations, which is going to be interesting. Let's put that here. Uh, our current combinations is going to return a vec of type t. Um, it's a self index iter map. So we're going to map this, each one of these is an index. And I'm going to do that so I don't have to deref it. Self vec of idx clone. All right, we're going to clone it out, collect. I wonder if it can tell that it's a vector type T, because then all we need to do here is say return self combos. Right? Does this build? Expected enum option. Oh, I just have to say some. And then down here, oh, we have an infinite loop, so that's fine. Oh, I shouldn't have done run. Oh, we're not calling it anyway. That's okay. Um, Let's, let's switch over to Clippy. That way it's not going to try to run it. All right, so we have our first one now. If we're not on the first one, then we're going to do this other logic. Which is all of this mess. Okay, so all we have to do, we're in this loop already. So we can say done is false. Oh, true. Um, let's do it this way. And then I can say while not done. And I can keep going. I can set it to true right away and then set it to false if we haven't hit the end. All right, so now we're going to just do this. Inc for inc index in zero to self combo rev um, self.idx of inc index plus equals one if self.idx inc index is equal to the vec.len continue right and then for next in inc so it's the same exact code plus one to self combo self idx next is equal to self idx next minus one plus one if self idx of next is equal to self vec len oops then we've run out of entries for this one and now we can set done to false again and break and listen to the train in the background. Um, and now if we're not done, instead of summing up the eggnog, we're going to return the combos, self combos, oh, some self combos. Otherwise, we are done with this particular combo Right? And we have to go to the move to the next combo now. Right? After this, we then say self combo plus equals one. Self first is true. Because now we have to generate this stuff here. Um, if we hit the end, we're done. If self combo is greater than self vecklen. Or not. All right, because if it's equal to it, then we want to we want to do that last round of, and that's going to come here. Our last round is going to get returned here, and then we're going to pop down here and then be done on the next iteration. All right, let's delete this. See if this clippies. It does. This might not be the most elegant code, but it works. Um, I think it works. Let's try it out first. Um, let's go back to day 17. Oops, that's the wrong 17. Let's go to this 17. And instead of calling combinations here, 
let's do self um Yeah. Let's change this to unsolved again. And we'll just, what we'll do is we'll print out the combinations for that vector. What was it? Uh, 20. I'm playing with all, I'm just looking here. I shouldn't. Let's not look yet. <clears throat> Let's look at these capacities. And I should just be able to say, all right, I sh should be able to just. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, use AOC lib combinations and combinations. I should be able to just print those out. Can I do that? Print line. No. Hope there's an associated function called contain. Oh, because it's not a vec. It only works on VEC. Oh, okay. So I can just say for C in this thing. Print one C. There. And now I should be able to run it. Yeah, and so these are all of our combinations. Perfect. Um, so I should be able to say also if C sum is equal to 25, do that. Right? Uh, C it or sum. by five. Perfect. Look at that. And so now what we need is to do, do it on the actual data. We say for C in self cap combinations, if C iters sum is equal to 150, then we're going to increment the count. And let count equals zero. And then this should be the, the what was it, 1304? Yeah, 1304. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. It's a beautiful thing when everything just works. Okay, and then we can get rid of all of that. And some eggnog we don't need anymore. Wow. Very impressive. Okay, so what was part two? While playing with all the containers in the kitchen, another load of eggnog arrives. The shipping and receiving department is requesting as many containers as you can spare. Find the minimum number of containers that can exactly fit all 150 liters of eggnog. How many different ways can you fill that number of containers and still hold exactly 150 liters? So now we're just going to get the count of how many containers we have for each possible count of containers. Does that make sense? How many different ways can you fill that number of containers? Um, so we know how many containers there are. So now count is going to be equal to back bang zero of self cap len. And we can just print that out. I, I can't just do it that way, right? It's going to say that it doesn't work. I have to actually format it. That's unfortunate. I got to come up with a better way to do that. Right, so now this is all zeros, but now we just need to, yeah. Now we just need to increment, we just need to print out for C in self cap combinations. If C iter sum 
I32. I could actually calculate it up here, do them both at the same time, but that's all right, 150. Then instead of incrementing count by one, we're gonna say count of C len plus equals one. And then we just need to print out the minimum, right? Of that array. How many different ways? Minimum number of containers is two. There were three ways to use that many containers, right? So we're just, oh, that should be plus equals one. Um, so we just need to print out count min. Supply zero arguments, uh, count iter min. Still not good, uh, unwrap. Still not good. Um, semicolon. There we go. What do we got? Our answer is, it's computing, zero. That's wrong. Oh, 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 oh. Um, filter x, x not equal to zero. And it's going to be a reference, right? So I want to deref it. I have to deref it twice. If I don't do the thing here, X is a reference to a reference to an I32. So if I put a deref or an ampersand there and a deref there, that should get us the value we're looking for, right? And it is computing. This is slow, taking two and a half seconds. 18. Is that right? It is. Look at that. All right, I think I'm burned out for today. That was three three puzzles in one day. Um, so what we can do here is say git status. What I should have done was say added these guys first. Source lib and source combo. Git commit dash m general purpose combinations iterator. And then git status, git commit dash am 2015, day 17, part two. And basically we deleted that entire combinations function um, and replaced it with just this for loop. Because now we have a general purpose combinations in the future when we write, when we hit a advent of code that requires combinations of something. We got it. We can do it and solve it really, really quickly. How long does it take to run all of them? Cargo run release, actually build release. And then I just time a run. Yeah, it's taking, taking a little longer because I didn't write my own MD5 and I didn't write my own JSON parser. So that's, oh well, it is what it is. Target, target, uh, release, um, and then this is just, what's it called? Run AOC, yeah. All. I forgot to put the word all. A4 still takes a long time. All right, so. In debug mode, these take 2.6 and 2.5 seconds, respectively. Here it takes a tenth of a second each. That's not too bad. And all the solutions run in less than four and a half seconds. All right. Maybe future, um, we're, we're getting close to the end here. We're two thirds of the way through, approximately.